So you've upgraded your brakes and now they feel like complete crap and they don't work. I've got about six different things that you can look at to try and figure out what the heck is wrong with your brakes. So let's get started. One thing that often goes overlooked in upgrading a brake system is the amount of math that's involved to actually make them work right on whatever car you're putting them in and feel good when you're actually pushing the brake pedal. Now the first part of this math equation is the master cylinder. Inside the master cylinder is a plunger. And as you push the brake pedal down, the plunger moves up the bore of the master cylinder and takes fluid from the reservoir and pumps it out of the brake lines. Now the plungers that are inside the master cylinders come in different sizes for different applications. So although the external size of a master cylinder might be the same across a bunch of different cars, the bore size of the plunger inside might be totally different. If you get a master cylinder that has a bore that is too small for your application, you might have too much pedal travel. And if you get one with a bore that is too big for your application, it may not have enough pedal travel and your brakes are gonna feel really hard. The next part of the math equation is brake calipers. Now brake calipers often look very similar, but they can have totally different sized pistons inside. This one on the left has a two and a half inch piston. This one on the right has a two inch piston. Now, if you end up putting the wrong caliper on your car, you may have too much brake pedal travel, or you might just not have the stopping power that you need to actually stop your car. Now, if you still have drum brakes on your car, that will be the third part of the equation. Now, drum brakes have wheel cylinders in them, and if those wheel cylinders are not matched up to the calipers in the front and the master cylinder at the front, then, again, your brake pedal is not going to feel right and it's not going to work right. So you have to make sure that your wheel cylinders are matched up to your calipers, which are matched up to your master cylinder. So you're probably saying, okay, all that stuff is well and good, but how do I know which parts actually work together and which ones don't? I'm going to tell you two different ways that I do it. So the first option is to just buy a brake upgrade kit for your car. It comes as one unit. Hopefully somebody smart put it together so you know it's all uh, sized properly and you'll just bolt it into your car, put the fluid in, bleed the brakes, and all will be well. Although sometimes it's not. Now the second option is to just buy all of the brake parts from some car that you know has good brakes and adapt them onto whatever your project car is. That may mean that you have to make all kinds of brackets to mount a caliper to a vehicle that is never meant to have a caliper on it. Or, in the case of a back brake, you might have to make all kinds of brackets to attach a caliper to a rear axle housing, which can be kind of a pain in the butt. So imagine you get all the right parts and it all should work. Maybe you bought a kit online or maybe you matched up all the parts and you know you did it right and it still works like crap. So let's diagnose it. A lot of brake pedals actually have two holes in them. And if yours doesn't, you might need to make a new hole in it depending on what your situation is. But this one happens to go in the bottom hole for me to get the best brake pedal function and feel. Sometimes you'll need it in the top hole, depending on what your situation is. If you're going with a non-power master cylinder or something like that, you may need to switch it out. So one thing to take a look at is make sure your, your master cylinder rod is going in the right hole. Try both of them. If one's not working, try the other and see how it feels. While we're under the dashboard, you want to make sure that the push rod that goes from your pedal to your master cylinder is adjusted right. You want a little bit of free play in it before it actually pushes on the master cylinder and you may need to get some adapters or maybe just a whole new shaft in general to make it all work so it'll take some fiddling with but with a little uh with a little patience you should be able to get a little bit of free play before it pushes the master and then you'll get it set up right this may sound crazy but calipers and many wheel cylinders can actually be mounted upside down and if you mount them upside down like this you'll never get the air bled out of them because the bleeder screw is at the bottom. You always want your bleeder screw to be on the top of your brake calipers and your wheel cylinders. Otherwise, it is impossible to bleed the air out of them. Here's a fun one. So this is a brake booster, and this is the shaft that goes through your firewall and connects to your pedal. Now on the front side, many brake boosters actually have an adjustment right here. And this adjustment will take up any free play in between the booster and the master cylinder. So if you have too much free play in between the booster and the master cylinder, you're going to have extra brake pedal travel. Dual reservoir master cylinders will sometimes have the front brake hose go into the front brakes and the rear go into the rear brakes, like this one. In this case, we got a front coming out and these two lines go to the front brakes. The rear 
of the master cylinder goes to the rear brakes. But there are cars out there that have them reversed. So the rear will go to the front brakes and the front will go to the rear brakes. So this is something you wanna double check to make sure that your master cylinder is set up properly with your proportioning valve, or if you don't have a proportioning valve, make sure that the proper line is going to the proper section of your brakes. If your brakes are still terrible after all of this, and you know your master cylinder is hooked up right, and you have all the right parts, and your bleeder screws are facing the right direction, now we get into the hydraulics of it. So let's talk about that. What I like to do next in this situation is I'll buy some plugs, and these plugs, will plug into different parts of the brake system. So I might get some that go in the master cylinder, that go in the proportioning valve, and I might get the opposite, a, um, a female plug that will actually block off a brake line. So once you, do, once you have all these plugs, you can start blocking off sections of the brake system and try and figure out where the weak spot is. I like to start right at the master cylinder. So what I'll do is I will just disconnect both brake lines put plugs in them, in both ports, and push the brake pedal down. Now, if there's fluid in it and the master cylinder is bled properly, the, pre the pedal will be rock solid and you won't be able to move the pedal at all because there's no place for the fluid to go. If your pedal is still moving, then that means that your brake master cylinder is not working properly and it probably has air in it or there's some other, some other issue in between your pedal and your master cylinder. So after that, we can go a little further. Once you know your master cylinder is working properly, then what I like to do is I'll just hook up one line. So I'll connect the front brakes and then I'll keep the back line blocked off with a plug. And I'll hook up front brakes and I will bleed the whole system or the whole front brake system. And I'll see how the brake pedal feels then because the back pedal will be totally blocked off and the front pedal will just be front brakes. And if that system feels good, then I say, okay, well, the problem is, is probably in the rear brakes. So then I will disconnect the, the block off and I will hook up the rear brakes, bleed the brakes again, and then I'll make sure that the pedal feels good with the rear brakes. And if at any point the pedal does not feel good, I know kind of which direction to go in. You can narrow it down further by separating out individual brake lines if you have a master cylinder like this, and you can put a plug in just the right front corner or just the left front corner or you can go to the back of the car and you can plug the rubber brake hose and you can do all kinds of things with these type of plugs where you can separate sections of the brake system and then try and bleed it and see where your problem is. You're basically just splitting the brake system up into many little pieces and trying to figure out where the hydraulic issue is. And it is not a fun task. There's lots of brake fluid that you go through and it's messy as heck, but it is a pretty much guaranteed way to find the problem within your brake system if it is a hydraulic issue. So the last thing I want to talk about is bleeding brakes. Bleeding brakes is a friggin' nightmare. So, and 99% of the time I'm working by myself. So bleeding brakes by myself is always tricky, but I've come up with a couple of tricks to make it easy and I'm gonna show you what those are. First thing is a clear hose and this is actually a one person brake bleeder. Now all it is, is basically a one-way valve with a spring in it and a little ball valve inside. And what it, what it does is it allows you to hook up a rubber hose to the uh, brake bleeder. And as you pump the brake pedal, fluid will squirt out, but not come back in, but air won't come back in. It's actually pretty creative and it works decently well and it also is very cheap. So if you don't have one of these, it's probably worth the, you know, seven or eight bucks that it probably costs to buy this. Um, I've had pretty good success with it, though it's not perfect. Let's imagine that you don't want to go to the store to get one of these, or you can't find one locally, and all you have is a brake caliper that needs to be bled and a rubber hose. Let me show you how I do it. The first thing that I like to do is I pull the bleeder screw out and I put grease on the threads. And that makes it so that the threads don't become a place where air can be sucked in as I'm bleeding the brakes. The next thing I do is I put the hose on the brake bleeder and then I run the hose all the way up and around into a jar of brake fluid. Now I actually keep a jar of brake fluid around that is brake fluid that has come out of my cars. And I don't ever put this back into my cars as new fluid, but I like to have a jar of brake fluid around just for this purpose. 
And this purpose is when you pump the brake pedal with the bleeder screw open, fluid is gonna come out the hose and then it's gonna go into this jar and all of the air that's in the system will bubble out, but no air will be sucked back in to the brake caliper because the fluid inside the jar will prevent it. So you can basically pump your brake pedal a few times and no air will come back in the system. It will, it will only push fluid out and no, no air back in. And then you just come back to your brake caliper and you tighten it up and you've now bled that brake caliper by yourself. The one thing that you have to watch out for is that you don't run your master cylinder dry because once you've run your master cylinder dry, then you get to bleed your master cylinder again, which is kind of a nightmare. Hopefully some of the tips in this video have actually helped you fix your brakes. If they have, or if you have any other questions, or if you have any other tips, definitely leave them in the comments because I want to learn more and I just want to hear what you guys are working on. So thanks again for watching the video. Thanks for subscribing and we'll see you next time.